Is. Happy how World Mental Health Day. Thank you. How are you? I'm all right, actually. I'm doing really well. How are you, really? I love that. I, whenever I speak to you, you always ask twice. Uh, it's been a difficult few weeks, actually, to be mm -hmm. fair. I'm actually doing quite well uh, the last few days, but getting used to um, being given a diagnosis of ADHD hasn't been easy. I've talked about it on my social uh, media, and um, it's kind of sad, I think, at 31 years old, kind of look back on your, on your life and wonder whether things might have been different or easier or... Just even understanding yourself better if you if you know why you are as you are and um you know life for me it's kind of i've got to and i do what I, I i'm passionate i i live the life that i want to live but how many people have been brushed along the wayside or have been lost i guess and not made it to where they want to be um because we didn't understand them or try to understand them is actually quite sad and how does it impact on your life um, and my life. Mm, having ADHD. So I guess, uh, you know, for me, I, I struggle to um, concentrate on things for a long period of time. I think there's a misconception around uh, ADHD that you can't concentrate. I have the ability to really hyper-focus on things, but I jump between. And actually working in A&E, it was brilliant. And the part of me thinks, well, is that why that I chose that career? Because it was working in operating theatre theater wouldn't have worked, but going to A&E really does. Um, I, there's lots of challenges, but I think a lot of it is a superpower as well. You know, my psychiatrist who diagnosed me said, it, for you it is a superpower because, you know, you can go and do a talk at a school, then, you know, I'm, I'm talking to you on, on Sky News and I'm going and working on my book and things. And that ability to, I guess, jump between things is, is a real help. But it's only become that way in later life. It was more challenging at school for obvious reasons. It's a, it's a system that's built a certain way and if you don't fit, it's very difficult. You want to talk about body image as well mm. and the impact um, that social media can have mm. on that and other people's views on, on what we look like and who we are. Yeah, well, I've, I've been uh, doing this campaign with ASICS and I'm really proud to actually think it's the best campaign I've, I've, I've ever really worked on and I'm proud to see a company taking ownership of this. You know, over 80% of people surveyed, thousands of people surveyed, over 80% said that they've put off exercising because of pressures around body image. So it's actually preventing people having all the benefits and the mental health benefits that we can have because they feel that pressure. So um, I did a before and after picture, um, which I actually posted post on my social media. Sure. The before was me having just a photo. Then I went and did exercise, came back and had the second photo done. People looking think, where's, where's the transformation? But it's about what happens in your mind. It's not, all, it's not about the body. Um, you see so many of these pictures of people going, look, I've lost all this weight and I'm ripped in this photo. All you're doing is putting pressure on people. Most of these photos are unrealistic and a lot of them are edited anyway. Let's normalise normal bodies and that is what this campaign's about. Make, be proud to exercise and to move for your own health. You know, and let's also view exercise in a different way. Exercise can mean going for a walk, just being outside. You know, for many people, just walking outside their front door is, 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 is a real challenge. So celebrate those little victories and, and get outside. It's exactly why I started the Stompcast uh, podcast, to encourage people to walk even 15, 20 minutes each day. It's great for your body and mind. If you want to go to the gym, fantastic, but don't see that as the... That's the only way that you can exercise if you lift weights. It isn't. My favourite for, form of exercise is walking. Yeah, me too. Um, how are you different now to when you were... Um, on Love Island? Well, the 20, 25 weeks running up to Love Island, I trained two hours a day, I starved myself. Um, I didn't see friends or family at all because I didn't want to have a cup of coffee because there's calories in that coffee or eat a meal well, that wasn't controlled. And I got myself into a real state running up to that. And, and I, even though someone might look, oh, gosh, look at the abs you had on this, I wasn't happy. I felt awful. You know, I'm much happier now that I, I, I enjoy movement and exercise. I don't worry if I have that coffee and a, and a donut with my family. I go and I enjoy life much more. I'm much more healthy. My body doesn't have, I don't have abs. I, I have a very normal body. I'm proud of my body, flaws and all. Um, but I'm much happier for it. And, I, and I, I have asked lots of people, I've talked to young people about this as well. When you have this shape that you see, that you, that you want to get to, when you've got those abs, will they make you happy? Well, and, 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 and think about it, and, and I've spoken to people who are in this shape and they're pushing even harder, they're going, oh, I need to now, I'm not big enough, I need steroids. And we've got up to a million people in the UK that have used anabolic steroids for aesthetic wow. purposes. Wow. So they've risked their heart, their liver, uh, the, their organs, their brain to enhance the way that they look. And I think that's really sad. That's so sad that that person is going to take those risks to look a certain way when they're beautiful as they are. Um, your one top tip for people for World Mental Health Day? 
First of all, I, I, the most important thing that I can say is to practice self-awareness. You ask me, how, how am I doing? How am I really? Ask yourself that question. If you cannot be aware of the problem, you can't fix it. You have to be aware. Reach out to people around you. I would say to anyone, the storm always passes. You are loved, you're appreciated. We love you, please don't give up hope. If you're in that dark space, reach out for help. Samaritans are there 24 seven. Uh, call them on 116 123 if you're in an emergency. Speak to people. There's always hope of a better day. Okay, it's always great to see you. Thank, Thank you, you very it's much. It's lovely to see indeed. you. Thank you very much indeed. 116 123, remember that. And we will also have it on our website as well. There's always people there to help you to bear that in mind. You don't have to go through challenges alone. People will always be there. They'll listen just after reach out and ask them.